was brought up in a traditional Chinese family. We were basically expected to fit quietly inside the box and emotions weren't talked about. Jennifer, we're so glad that you joined us today. I'm really looking forward to discussing with you your upbringing as well as what you're doing today. Thank you for having me here. So tell me a little bit about your childhood. I was brought up in a traditional Chinese family. We were basically expected to fit quietly inside the box and emotions weren't talked about. Spanking and physical punishment was not uncommon in our family. And the impact of that was a lot of holding in and holding it back. And this created a lot of pain um, in the body. I'm a free thinker and I'm an empath. And as a child, I needed more love and attention. And my mom in particular showed me the importance of emotions because she was unable to express them. As children, we don't have a lot of control um, around what happens to us. And so we just kind of learn to deal with it and move on. And sometimes we don't deal with it until we're adults and we don't realize that some of that pain that we feel today could have been from there. At the age of five, I had a near the experience and it gave me a deeper knowing of who I am and the outer world around me. What was the near-death experience? I was chasing my brother and my uncle mm -hmm. on hardwood floors and I was wearing socks. So then I just went full speed and I s slipped and I fell backwards and my head hit the floor. And next thing I knew, I was pulled up like towards the ceiling. I could see everyone around me. And I thought, whoa, what's going on? You know, and then I felt this push. And next thing you know, I'm like back in my body. I was told I was, I had stopped breathing for like two minutes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I realized, you know, on the inside, I was me. And then on the outside, I was trying to be that person that my parents wanted me to be. Ah, so there was you a know? conflict there. Yeah, there's a conflict because, you know, this, this further creates pain in the body because it's a conflict between identities. Mm -hmm. And I struggled between listening to my own intuition and listening to um, them telling me what I should be doing. Mm -hmm. Like, I got to a good school because I thought that's what they wanted and that they would finally praise me for something, um, but they didn't because they didn't realize the, the hard work it took to get there. And I resented them until I realized I could have been following myself the whole time. Mm -hmm. So I went on a road of self-discovery mm -hmm. um, because your, your body is always speaking to you through pain or illness, and it's gonna tell you over and over and over again until we uh, listen closely and actually address what the pain really is about. So share with me um, an experience about your friend that was in a coma. Yeah, so a friend of mine um, was traveling overseas and you know went through some trauma and just went into an induced coma because he had lost so much blood. And there was no way of me reaching him but the person that was with him called me and said, hey, they're gonna pull the plug because we don't have any way of you know, having insurance here or whatnot. And I, it was, yeah, so through the work that I did, I thought, well, you know, I do energy work and I connect with people in such a way that who's to say that I can't connect with him on this level? So I did an experiment and um, I just, put myself in a really deep meditative state and I intentionally connected with him. And I thought I was imagining at first, but I was communicating with him and he was telling me, he was showing me where he was at. And I was asking him, are you planning to come back because they're planning to pull the plug and you need to go back into your body soon. You know, it's, and um, he's like, no, I want, I want to live. I'm just hanging out for a bit because it's uncomfortable in there. I said, okay, you know. And that was it. I came out of it and I was like, whoa, did I imagine that? You know, and the very next day, 
um, the, the person who called me called me again and said, guess what? He woke up. No kidding. And he said he was like in another world. And I started describing, you know, was it mountains and trees and all these things that I saw. He said, yeah, that was it. I said, does he remember talking to me because I connected with him? And he's like, yes, he does remember talking to you. So that it's was pretty impactful. Well, yes. <laughs> that kind of stuff gets so, a little scary yeah. sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's how I ventured off into remote healing. What do you want people to take away from your story? Well, now I'm helping others in pain and I am teaching other practitioners this method um, where I help them um, connect their pain to their undealt emotions. Yes. Yeah, and just getting to the root of the pain and then rebalancing energetically. Thanks for coming today. Thank you. These women's stories are so impactful. Eris Sisters creates opportunities for women. Mm -hmm.